This is a video about hidden waterways and weirs, trains and trams, and a place where the Beatles and Elton John once played gigs. Swinegate, an unusual name, but a really interesting district of Leeds, with an incredible past, closely linked to the history of the city. Today, as in the past, it is home to a wide collection of commercial properties, but the area has witnessed massive changes since it was originally used by the residents of Leeds many centuries before. Swinegate is located on the southern edge of Leeds city centre and connects Leeds Bridge, Coll Lane and Brigate at its eastern end with Mill Hill and Bishopgate Street at its western reaches. It is one of the oldest roads in the city and it is believed its name is derived from the pigs once herded along its route. Swinegate was the location of the King's Mill and for many centuries the residents of the township of Leeds were obliged to grind their corn there until this rule was relieved in 1839. The mill can be located in this map from 1770. It was water powered and water was redirected from the River Eyre at Bondman Weir. The water was channelled to a point to the rear of where the Queen's Hotel stands today and then it ran downhill, passing through and powering the King's Mill. This is the location of Bondman Weir and is the point where the water was directed away from the air and into what was called a mill goit. Part of the Leeds City Railway Station now stands over the Mill Goit route, which headed off towards Bishopgate Street. The river water which didn't move into the Goit passed over Bondman Weir and continued on its original course along the River Eyre. This is the River Eyre passing over Bondman Weir and under Leeds City Railway Station, which stands above this point. These are known as the Dark Arches, which were built later by the Victorians to carry the railway stations. Water in the Mill Goit flowed across to roughly this point on Bishopgate Street, where it would turn and run downhill. The Mill Goit was visible here right up until the end of the Victorian period, running approximately where the wall is on the right today. Here the goit turned and passed under a bridge over it and then it continued towards the King's Mill in the direction of those doors you can see on Neville Street and onwards towards the mill on Swinegate. In the 1860s huge viaducts were built through this area to allow trains to access the Leeds new station. This was a massive engineering undertaking, which changed the look of Leeds town centre considerably. The viaducts had to allow the flow of the mill goits to continue, and it led to a large section of the waterways being covered over. This map from 1890 shows the extent of the mill goit route, which was covered over by the railway viaducts. The mill goit split into two at a weir below the railway and inside the viaduct structure. One part of the mill goit ran on to the King's Mill and the other towards other mills nearby. Two waterways ran out of the viaducts. The King's Mill goit passed through this arch, which is noticeably wider than the other arches, and headed into the King's Mill behind me. The other goit passed through this arch, nearer to Neville Street and on to other mills nearby in the area. In this map of 1815, you can see that the area called School Close was effectively an island and the water in the mill goits was being used to power several mills in the area. 
Several of the place names in this location included the word Tenter. Tenter Lane, for example. Tenters were huge frames which were constructed on this site that were 12 to 30 yards long where cloth was stretched to dry after fulling. Cloth making became a major industry in Leeds and these names linked to the early development of the trade. There was enough space here for tenters to be set up. Eventually, the Milgoits either rejoined the river nearby or continued towards Warehouse Hill. By 1900, enormous changes were taking place in the city. The Milgoits were no longer needed and were blocked off. This picture shows a retaining wall being built at Bondman Weir to ensure the river travelled in its entirety through the dark arches and no longer passed along the Goits. There is a lot of debate about how much of the Goits remain behind the wall you can see on the right and underneath the station and railway viaducts. This map from 1906 shows the extent of the clearance taking place around Swinegate. By this stage, the majority of the mill buildings have been taken down and the riverbank has been shored up so that it will be difficult to know the Milgoits ever flowed out into the river here. This view looks across a Milgoit and weir which supplied Concordia Mills to the left and the Flay Crow Mills on the right. Both of these mills had been used to grind corn into flour. A stone bridge linked the mills and behind this a flight of steps led up to Tenter Lane. Sovereign Street was further extended across this place to join Swinegate at the turn of the 20th century and today it is difficult to imagine the mills and waterways that were here before. As the 20th century commenced, on the eastern end of Swinegate, changes were also taking place. The buildings on the left of this photograph, which are at the southern side of Swinegate, and although rather impressive, were pulled down. To the left of this shot is Leeds Bridge. Swinegate runs on ahead. To the right, over the shoulder of the photographer, is Brigitte. The Leeds Tramways offices were built at this location and the buildings remain to this day, although its purpose has changed substantially and it is now a hotel and restaurant. At the back of the buildings on the south side of Swinegate, the King's Mill Goit once ran on its way to Warehouse Hill, passing under the road which led to Leeds Bridge. You can see its course in this photograph. To the left of the photo is a building which abutted the Leeds Bridge and in between was Tenter Lane, which would soon no longer exist. All of the buildings in this photograph on the southern side of Swinegate were demolished at the same time. They included the premises of cabinet makers, clothiers engineers, metal shoe and pram manufacturers, a furniture showroom and the old Dusty Miller Inn. Standing at the same point as the photographer all these years on, the changes that have taken place can be seen and they are considerable. This photograph, further along the south side of Swinegate, shows the former premises of Mark Wood, who were woollen merchants. This building was also demolished. Behind it is a rare view of the King's Mill and part of the Mill Goit watercourse, possibly a mill pond, which ran alongside Swinegate. Once again, it is impossible to detect what stood here in the past from these modern buildings that have replaced them. Clearing the land allowed new and important buildings to be introduced 
including the Swinegate Tram Depot, which took up a good proportion of the land. The depot took up a large area at the centre of this map, but there were also new mills and factories that were introduced around Concordia Street. This is a view of the entrance to the tram depot on Swinegate. The depot provided considerable space to shelter trams and carry out repairs. Outside of the depot were tram stops where people could board and disembark. The tram stopped running in Leeds in 1959 and the depot was redesignated as the Queen's Hall in 1961, becoming, among other uses, a music venue which hosted many famous artists and bands, including The Beatles, The Jam, The Clash and Elton John. It also held car auctions and flea markets. Sadly, the Queen's Hall finally closed its doors in 1989 and was demolished soon after. Whilst the south side of Swinegate has undergone considerable change, some of the buildings on the north side have managed to last a little longer. This group of buildings on Swinegate and those behind it in Blades Yard have managed to avoid the various clearances experienced by parts of Leeds. They are a lovely collection of buildings constructed in the red brick which is typical of the city. They look set to stay and maintain a strong link with the past. It would be a shame to lose them and if they could speak these buildings could tell a story or two. The former Leeds Tramways offices are also here to stay and with so much development in the area it is good to see some of the factory buildings introduced in the 20th century are also being preserved and converted for new use. With a new footbridge across the air being built as I filmed this the area is experiencing something of a renaissance. Swinegate has witnessed some remarkable changes. Some might say it isn't the prettiest of the Leeds streets, but there is no doubt of its important role in the development of the city. The railway viaducts cutting across the city brought positives and negatives, and transformed all in their path. Who knows what hides behind these walls and under the dark arches? I, for one, would love to find out.